Hey everybody. So I wanted to make a really quick video on a text editor that I've been using quite a lot recently and I've really started to kind of fall in love with. It's not perfect by any means, but really what editor ever is. And the editor that I'm talking about is Lem or L-E-M. It is a text editor written in Common Lisp and it's really impressed me in just how far it has come. It supports multiple other languages. It even has language server port in the works. Uh, a few languages work right out of the box, but it's not really perfect and it's obviously still in development. And the really cool thing about it is just how easy it is to configure. To me, I think of it as a terminal-based Emacs with a, in my opinion, better configuration language. So let's go ahead and show it off and get you guys introduced to it, get it installed, and let you guys play around a bit. So jumping right into it, this is uh, Lem or LEM's page on GitHub. I'll link it down in the description. There's a bunch of stuff here. It has this nice, nice little uh, logo. You know, logos are always important. And then a few screenshots. Now there is basically only two requirements, which is Roswell and NCurses. If you're using Linux or pretty much any operating system based on Linux, then you probably have NCurses already. Chances are that you also have a Curses implementation for sorry, Mac OS or Windows available. If not, I'll direct you guys to to look that up yourselves because I honestly don't use Mac OS or Windows anymore. And alternatively, you can actually play around with it in Docker if that interests you. There's not any demand, you don't have to do that. That's another option as well. Now for the installation process, it's actually pretty straightforward. If I open up a terminal, what you're gonna wanna install is Roswell and uh, Roswell. There is a Roswell in the AUR. Um, you can go ahead and install that. So just popping over to Roswell's page, you can see that it has the available way to install it with Linux. So you could use the APK for Alpine, Arch has an option, Void has an option, Gen2. Um, so there's a lot of different ways as well as for Mac OS. Oh, sorry, actually, I guess you can use Homebrew on Linux, apparently. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways to actually go about uh, installing it. Same thing with FreeBSD, Windows. Yeah, so there's lots of ways to go ahead and installing with Roswell. Now, first thing we're gonna wanna do is we can go ahead and just do Ros install or actually we'll just do use sbcl now if you're running this for the first time it's going to go ahead and uh install sbcl which is a common lisp compiler it'll go ahead and install that for you and roswell you can kind of think if you guys are from the node community you can think of roswell kind of something similar to nvm node version manager or you could think of it i think ruby has something similar ruby version manager basically it's a way to handle um, a bunch of different implementations of common lisp as well as being able to actually install programs from common lisp really easily um, so a good example is qlot or qlot quat I don't know. That, that's a, another program that can be installed through Roswell. And another one is Lem. So how you do that is you do, uh, right as it says there, so you do ros install Lem. Oh wait, no, you're gonna wanna do the actual, that's one thing that's nice is that Roswell does support uh, installing from GitHub repos. So it'll go ahead. So this won't really actually install it. I already have it installed. Um, once again, you're gonna wanna add this to your path. Um, this will basically make it so that way you see that it's installing a bunch of different uh, programs. So the NCurses interface, Lem, uh, making that available for you. But right out of the box, now that we've got it installed and we've added this to our path. So if we went ahead and ran this, this isn't necessary because I already have this, but we can just run that. And then we can go ahead and do lem.emacs.el. And so it's going to go ahead and just kind of build and compile everything for us. So it's just going to take a second. Uh, a lot of this is just Roswell. I'm sorry, not Roswell. Uh, Lem catching up. So right out of the box, it has gone ahead and it's opened this up. And so it doesn't really know what this is. That's because it's a Lem out of the box isn't configured to support Emacs Lisp. We could just do Lisp dash mode and we'll get some syntax highlighting. So really quick as an example, we'll go ahead and go to uh, my dot Lem slash init dot Lisp. And so this is my actual configuration for Lem. A Lem is actually very powerful when it comes to configuration. So I've just gone ahead and set up screen keys. So now you guys can see my key presses. Out of the box, it uses the same key presses as you would see in Emacs. So Control P, Control N, Control E, Alt B, all that sort of stuff. A lot of the keys that you'd expect, even Control Alt Space, pretty much anything. If it's not there, uh, go ahead and make an issue and maybe it'll get added. I've also added a lot of uh, other keys. There are some differences, some of which I actually kind of agree with, like having an undo and redo key. Uh, redo only recently got added to Emacs, which is uh, kind of crazy, but that's actually already in and out of the box on Lem. 
as well as a par edit mode. Par edit is basically a way to manage parentheses. It comes with a bunch of different modes out of the box that you can go ahead and enable. Uh, one of the most important ones for you Vim users is Vim or VI dash mode. VI mode. There we go. And so now I get um, HJKL, all that sort of stuff. It isn't perfect. It doesn't have, um, like if I do DI, it doesn't actually handle like delete inside word or dw is kind of just like your best option or d sh shift w all that sort of stuff it does i actually believe it uh supports par edit natively i'm not really completely sure i haven't played around with it very much um because honestly i don't actually find i use vi keys very often anymore uh so now i'm back to normal emacs keys and you guys can actually create your own modes very easily it has a lot of really interesting ways to approach it but we'll get into that later now as you'd expect it uses the same sort of keys to get around so like i said before Control P, uh, Alt F, Control Alt B, all that sort of stuff. But you can also do Control X, Control F to switch files. And it even has tab completion. So you can go ahead and jump to a file. You actually also get code completion as well. So if I do Dart dash Lisp REPL, I'll get a nice REPL over here on the side. And so now I can actually uh, get some code completions. Since this is actually a Lisp REPL running in LEM, and we'll go ahead and actually get some code completion. So really quickly, let's go ahead and uh, do QL colon. And so QL is how you access Quick Lisp, which is basically a package manager for a common Lisp. And so we can go ahead and get access to some stuff. So we can do quick load. This is a, a little bit of a strange thing to do, but maybe we'll do um, str. So this is a string manipulation library. So we'll hit enter and now we have str available and now we can do str blit, I believe. And then we'll get some nice completion here. So it'll say like, what's the separator? So let's do colon. And then we wanna give it the string. So let's give it hello world. And so there you go, so we can hit enter. And so while this may seem like, oh yeah, that's just a Lisp REPL, remember that this is available in the text editor. So we could actually um, use these same libraries and interactively program the text editor. So if I actually go over here and we go to my init, we can actually evaluate some code. So let's go ahead and change this uh, pop-up box. And we'll go ahead and we'll just use 666. And so now when we compile that, we'll see that the box is a bit, let's make it a uh, one zero zero, let's do nine zero zero. So it's a bit, stands out a bit more. You see, there we go. Now we can actually just configure the box right out of the gate. And we're literally just able to uh, manipulate it kind of similar to how you would in Emacs. But obviously since this is using common Lisp, you get lexical scoping right out of the gate. You get substantially more powerful macros. Um, you get obviously better performance, substantially better performance, and you get multi-threading. You get a collection of libraries out there that already exist. Not that Emacs doesn't have a lot of libraries, but Emacs itself doesn't have like amazing libraries for certain things because obviously it's not really built for that like stuff like if you wanted to say for example do database interactions or something like that in your editor that is possible which is really cool and so if you actually look you'll see that i've actually added some of the features that i was missing from emacs alt ampersand isn't actually available out of the box and this is basically a way to do an asynchronous command and so i added this myself uh so let's just do ls and this will um really quickly whoa that's strange that it didn't actually work. As you can see, uh, there we go. Second time's the charm. Um, so yeah, there we go. So now you can see, obviously this uh, screen key is kind of in the way, but let's go ahead and just do, uh, there we go. Now that won't be uh, blocking our way. So now we can kind of see what's going on. This is the results from LS. Um, and I actually just programmed that myself. And in fact, I have another video coming out that will actually show off some of these. But basically you could just access the code and just like in Emacs, if I wanted to jump to the definition, I could just do alt period. And that will take me to the definition in the source code of LEM. And since LEM is actually written in all common Lisp, you can go all the way down to the lowest level to actually how it's interacting with end curses, um, which is really awesome. And you can actually redefine code if we wanted to, uh, maybe I probably shouldn't do this. There's internal functions that you could actually modify and add. But if I wanted to, I could actually change the functionality of add hook uh, really easily. Uh, and as you guys can see, it's just common lisp all the way down, which is uh, really awesome and really powerful. Uh, now, just for the sake of it, let's go ahead and just look through my config. So right away, the theme I load is just the dark theme from Emacs, pretty straightforward. I have a find file hook to basically determine whether to load par edit. So now I can go ahead and actually um, use some par edit uh, keys. Let's just undo that. I also changed the undo and redo keys. By default, redo is control slash. 
I'm sorry, redo is this key originally, and then undo is like control backslash, which, you know, I kind of get, it's not really what I'm used to doing. So I went with this and changed that. I added some par edit keys just to be a bit more straightforward. I did add some keys. So control X, control space will kind of like jump me back between places that I've been, um, which is kind of helpful. I added some key bindings just to make uh, looking up stuff really easily. So control H, shift B. This will like give me listing of all the available currently bound keys for those of you guys that want to know how to do that you can actually do describe uh, describe bindings and this will give you a nice description um, as well as automatic indentation i did with this avoiding the emacs style like recentering of lines i did with this setting and a, uh, and a few other extensions as you guys can see there's quite a bit of stuff here another thing i did was add a way to quickly run the command go run just to execute a file really quick just because i was playing around with go recently so i'm sure you guys kind of see the power here you can go ahead and start a lisp repl and you can program in lisp really easily but what about other programming languages now other languages actually do have a decent amount of support so let's go ahead and we'll actually go to Let's go to like a go file i picked go intentionally i know that go has um has okay support what else what do i want let's just go i don't really care which one i go to I go regex.go there we go and so right out of the gate it goes ahead and loads some stuff for us now right away it will give us some errors if it can't find something so could not import da -da 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 -da. and this is all doing it using the language server for go so like I said before, it has a rudimentary language server support. It's pretty decent, I'd say. It's not amazing, but I'd say it's pretty, pretty decent. The issue is that it isn't exactly stable yet, so keep that in mind going forward. But it actually does seem to have decent support. Let's just do uh, FMT. Let's see, there we go. So it's completed the symbol. Oh, there we go. And it's actually giving us pretty decent completion. Print line, and then let's see if it catches um, so yeah, so it's catching that this is actually uh, undeclared. I'd say that's actually pretty good, pretty straightforward. It doesn't really offer too much. Like I said before, I don't think it actually offers a way to compile Go code out of the box. So I actually had to have that uh, Go run and you could probably add your own sort of stuff. Maybe there will be a community made Go mode or something like that in the future. This is a pretty good starting point. It does have a few other languages. I haven't actually tested all of them. Rust was another one, but Rust had a few issues and there's a few other ones. I think even they have a flutter or dart language server set up but i haven't tried that so other languages are supported there's actually a lot of languages that have syntax highlighting so most of the obvious ones like java c javascript i don't know if it has typescript but a lot of the ones that you'd kind of expect to see in pretty much any editor are supported they just don't have completion and stuff like that but uh there's also obviously there's a scheme yeah, scheme repls. Uh, it has scheme support, I believe. Yeah, so lots of options there. And a bunch of, uh, I believe there's another one if I do, um, oh yeah, and you could obviously do uh, shell. Obviously it doesn't have amazing support, but that's because you can actually navigate like you would in the editor, kind of like what you'd see with Emacs, uh, Echo, a lot of hello worlds in this video, but you guys kind of get the idea. Obviously, if you used something really simple, I guess this is still going to have... Uh, Oh yeah, there you go. So there, here it's kind of like giving us a pretty, pretty simple interface. But when it tries to do a bit more, it uh, it runs into some issues. Let's go ahead and kill that. And you get a pretty simple navigation with Control X B to kind of jump around buffers. Um, oh yeah, it's giving us output. Oh, there we go. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that it actually even offered that. Let's go to my init.lisp. Oh yeah, so pretty straightforward. I'm not really something uh, super crazy and out there but I found that customizing it was honestly just super fun and I found extending it really cool. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found this interesting and you guys got to learn about this really interesting text editor. Um, I recommend it if it interests you guys. It uh, also gives you a really easy way to get started with Common Lisp because obviously you have it right there and it gives you a very Emacs-like experience. So I recommend it. Documentation could be a bit better, um, but I think that's just due to a language barrier. A lot of the maintainers of the project are not native English speakers, um, but they do translate a lot of the documentation. So a lot of it does translate. It's just a bit painful to get started, but once you're started, it's not too bad. And finally, I'd like to give a big shout out to Palantinus, Carr, Tall Guy Jenks for supporting me on GitHub Sponsors, and Connor G for supporting me on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, you guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you guys in the next video.